as I watched this video before I posted it, I was going to post it at work, but I'm on my way home from work now, and I didn't have time to make this little intro. The thing that's hilarious about this, you can hear me riding on the back detour road, and you can hear all the stuff in my truck bouncing around. You can hear me bouncing. You can see me bouncing. And that's me traveling between 25 and 30 miles an hour and slower at times as I have to slow down for the big bumps. So um, that's the noise that you hear rattling in my truck. If it's annoying, I apologize. But that kind of shows the road that has been shut down. One of the main roads that a lot of people that go in and out of East Palestine, we have to take these little back roads. Almost ran over a groundhog. Funny how animals don't stop. They're 20 feet away in the grass and they run all the way in front of your truck uh, to get to the other side of the road. But anyway, that's the noise that you hear. It's the rattling on the back road detour from uh, the Norfolk Southern derailment. All right, enjoy the video. Oh, what a late night. So I'm headed to work. I went to bed still later than I normally would pre-derailment, but for those of you involved in still caring about the contamination in our town and our waterways, most of you probably like me do not get a full night's sleep anymore because there's just so much to do or think about or discuss. But last night was a little crazy because I went to bed at midnight, which is way later than I used to, but oftentimes better than post-derailment, but it's way later than I used to pre-derailment. So I laid down in bed and opened up the phone for a moment and went off the rails on off the rails. And man, there was some like heated discussions in there. So I had to end up staying, I was up until 2 a.m. And um, I still have the energy to see you, Cindy, so that's good. I, I actually don't feel bad today, but I got about four and a half, five hours of sleep. Um, and that's after working a full, long, very busy day yesterday and physical work. So anyway, um, I wanna discuss that a little bit. There's a lot of topics to talk about. First of all, some, there, there was very heated arguments. I rarely delete posts. Some of you may think that I delete your posts, and normally when I do, I'll kind of give you a little message on why, but Facebook deletes more posts from our site than I ever do, and it happens quite often. Um, if you make derogatory statements towards somebody, which uh, Facebook will call violence or hate speech, and that, that's a little iffy because Facebook has such a subjective point of view on what is hate speech and what isn't. But let me just give you a couple clues. If you call somebody like a female dog or um, you insult them, uh, then Facebook in, insult them in a, like a violent way or something like that. Facebook is going to see it. They're going to delete it. I don't know if that's a real human or a bot. Uh, if they're the computers are trained to find certain words or whatever. And if we get too many of those on the site, we're going to get strikes and uh, it can be, you know, they can shut us down. So a lot of times when you think it's me deleting your posts, it's not. It's Facebook themselves and I get notified about that. A lot of people wonder why I allow people to post anonymously. If you see somebody, let's say you think that somebody some child, somebody's child is in danger. It is the law that you do not have to give your name to report somebody that you think is abusing their child or whatever it may be, putting their child in danger. And yes, that can be good and bad, but I think the good outweighs the bad in that type of situation. Not always, but the majority of the case is because people that would be afraid of backlash or retaliation uh, can report somebody that they think is putting their child in danger without the fear of being attacked or something happening them, to them in the future from the people that they are accusing. Now in this case, a lot of times there are very, very uh, nice people that 
let's just imagine maybe like a, a woman that is very quiet at times and reserved and she's afraid to say something on uh, voice her opinion on social media because she is afraid of backlash from family, from residents, from uh, Norfolk Southern, who knows what it may be. So I will not stop that. And then you have the people that are normally outspoken and sometimes they will post anonymously because the subject matter uh, is so controversial that they don't care about themselves, but they may have relatives or children in school that they don't want picked on. So um, for the most part, I think the anonymous uh, posts work out pretty well. And you guys can pick on the anonymous posters for posting anonymously, but that's what makes the world go round. Now, if anonymous, somebody anonymously posts something just, just uh, you know, very derogatory, then I or Facebook will delete it. I've never gotten angry with one resident. People have attacked me repeatedly on Facebook, but I, I, I don't, I haven't really attacked anybody, and I won't, um, because when you get to a certain maturity or age or whatever it may be, you understand that every individual thinks differently. There are people that don't give a damn that the creek is filled with contaminants, and and I. I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and that's when the rivers in Pittsburgh were highly polluted. Uh, and they've since cleaned up their act. Does that mean that, oh, the rivers and streams were so polluted in the 60s and 70s, you should have seen it back then. Does that justify, or is that rationale to say that it's okay now? You know, you guys are spoiled. It's okay to have all those deadly chemicals in our waterways. I don't see it that way. But a lot of people do, and that's okay. So if the majority of the town doesn't give a damn about that stuff, well then that's okay. Do what you will with the videos I make in the creek, which I keep saying I'm gonna stay out of because it's not smart or safe, but except one other person, who else is gonna do it? My friend Randy's always in the creeks, and. Uh, he even wears less things than I do in terms of PPE. But many people have attacked me for being in the creeks and showing the chemicals. And that's fine. I don't get angry with those people. So when you post on the site, understand that if you're going to put something controversial or something that you don't even think is controversial, but other people do, you're going to see the other side and other people's opinions. And then I think, of course, you know that. So then you actually can get more people on your side by being cordial to that person, giving your point of view. There's no reason for either side, uh, what I call contrarians to the majority of the point of view on off the rails, uh, there's no reason for contrarians or there's no reason for uh, people posting information about you know, what Norfolk Southern is doing or not doing, uh, et cetera. There's no reason for people to bicker like they do on the site. There's a lot of uh, what I will call contrarians that is, have been with uh, on off members of Off the Rails since its inception. I think I've been very fair in inviting a different point of view. Hey, everything I say may be wrong 10 years from now. We wanna hear other people's point of view. Uh, I know I'm not wrong about the chemicals in the creek. They're horrible to this day. And we are over uh, six months, six and a half months out. But whether they're gonna get into our wells, who knows? Uh, maybe they never will. I'm personally not willing to take that gamble, but let's assume they never will. Uh, let's assume that no animal ever gets poisoned or any deer that eats those chemicals or drinks those chemicals from the stream will ever poison anybody. But <clears throat> on that note, you know, it's funny that people talk about, hey, I've worked with gasoline my whole, since I was a kid, and, uh, I've t touched and handled benzene. And there is no doubt that the United States now has one of the worst cancer rates in the industrialized world. Um, every One in every two men 
in one in every three women uh, will get cancer. And researchers believe, there are researchers that believe that uh, in another 10 years, uh, by 2030, it's going to overtake heart disease. That's because we're so overloaded with toxic chemicals and there's an overload in our systems that everything we touch, everything we breathe is just harmful. All the pesticides all around us, uh, you could just, I could just go down the line. So when you couple that with increasing the toxic load, uh, there is no doubt that what happened to us in East Palestine in both the air, land, soil, uh, not both, but all the air, land, soil, and water, that our toxic burden has been increased probably 10,000 fold. Uh, so just because you are safe now, or your family, you think you're safe now, doesn't mean you will not feel the effects of this at a later date. From the very beginning, if you see my video where I'm walking in the park where they've got the 24 aerators spraying into the air, releasing the chemicals, changing them from one form in the sediments uh, of the creek bed, nice razor, um, and um, sediment in the creek bed, and putting that into the air with kids in the park, uh, damn it, I saw that razor and I forgot what I was talking about. The point I was leading to here is that I've always stated that whether you have symptoms or whether you don't have symptoms, if you were exposed to these chemicals or if you're continually being exposed, it doesn't matter whether you have symptoms or not. We're talking about long-term potential. And I say potential, hopefully nobody ever gets long-term illness from what we were exposed to. But you have the potential of being ill many, many years later from being exposed. Be kind to each other on off the rails. All right, there's no need to fight. My two brothers out west, they have totally different political views than I. And when we get together, we love each other, we have fun. We do not give a shit who votes for who. Maybe I'll end with this. Politicians in town, they're fair game. I don't think we should be insulting how people look. Uh, I think we should... Uh, we can debate their actions or lack of actions or policies. It doesn't really matter how you look or uh, because we all have friends and family members that are all different. Some are heavy, some are short, tall, thin, whatever. That, that doesn't matter. So with someone like the current president or past president, you know, get angry with those people if you want. Voice your opinions. But my advice would be not to get angry with the people that vote for them. So that would be your family, your friends, and that's what's going on here. Uh, we can all have different opinions in East Palestine, Ohio. And the real sign of maturity is that you may disagree with somebody, but even if you don't see their point of view, you can respect uh, that they have that point of view. So, uh, be kind and rewind, people.